I can categorize, in fact, these into four categories. The main barriers that are, in fact, uh, blocking the, or the, the spreading of this technology. I would say that the first one, the first important one, is the technical one. Why that? In fact, you know that BIPV, so it is integrated photovoltaic, so the panels or the photovoltaic things will be part of the building components or the part of the building envelope. So part of the building envelope, that means these are going to be multifunctional multifunctional components, which means that they're going not only to convert the sunlight into electricity, but also they might serve as a sun, for example, shading, they might be like a thermal insulation or other uh, functions. So here, in fact, to be able to do this, to execute it, you need a qualified manpower, like engineers, technicians, and so on, which is very difficult to find in this area. Now, the second one, I would say it's mainly the social one. The social, that means the people, the citizens of these people of these countries they're not yet very familiar with this technology so they might like you know don't feel comfortable with it so they might turn immediately there in fact uh, they might turn immediately to the fossil fuels the traditional ones the third one i would say it's mainly the administrative one administrative or legislative one because you know that in many countries here also there are still absence of rules absence of certifications for some of these components and this is, in fact, creating some uncertainties in the market. Now we finish with the fourth, uh, in fact, uh, barrier, which is the uh, financial or the economical one, in fact. Why that? Uh, you know that the uh, payback period for such technology today is still high. It's not, not really competitive compared to the other uh, technologies. And this is one of the main barriers we face. And also, in addition to this, you know, there are some incentives. They do exist. But if someone is willing to apply for having a loan with very low interest, okay? So what happens is that this is a long process. There's a very long process for it. So this is in fact like, you know, if I want to choose to go into a renewable BIPV, I'll have to apply first for a loan, then it has to be approved by the, uh, in fact, for example, Lebanon, LCEC or any organization in the different countries that are usually the responsible for it. And then they have to get the, the bank's approval, then to go back. So it's really a long process. While to get connected to the grid, the fossil fuel grid, is just one application, you fill it and you get like in a few days, you get connected. So this is in summary what I can say that the major constraints or the major barriers. And I would say that here, if I may add, the Foster and Matt project is trying to overcome these barriers through three major points. I would say the first, the guideline if that was created, which is going to be like a training path for professionals where we're going to be able to give the know-how of how to do or implement such a project. This is first. Second, the training or the seminars for citizens and students, which are going to create awareness for such technology. So this is where, you know, you educate people and they will feel more comfortable with it. And the third one is going to be through a paper or policy paper with local administrators that are responsible for energy policy. They will be, in fact, uh, working together with the different countries, material countries, to come with a policy paper that will try to answer also the, the other points, which are the legislation points. And that's it. Thank you.